Okay, once again, good evening. Uh, I pray that today's study will be a blessing to us. Let us pray. Gracious Father, and we thank you for bringing us together to study your word. As we open your word, open our hearts and reveal yourself to us in a way that our faith will be strengthened. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, Okay, we are working uh, with the topic. Does God exist? We have looked at uh, the outline. I said we will do it in six parts. Evidence against the existence of God. Is belief in God irrational? Then we looked at uh, arguments for the evidence of God. Biblical evidence. Today we will look at very important. If God created the universe, then who created God? And hopefully, God willing, next week we will close with can monotheism be proven? That means can you prove that there is only one God? Arguments against, we looked at four arguments that people come up with why they why they believe there is no God. Then we looked at the second is belief in God irrational because many think that we don't reason out when we believe in God, but we looked at four possible answers. Then um, coming to the third, we looked at evidence for God, four um, evidence, ontological, teleological, cosmological, and moral. And then we also looked at uh, biblical evidence for the existence of God. We looked at uh, evidence from the universe. Last week we did this. Evidence from the Holy Scriptures and uh, evidence from prophecies and world history, evidence from the predictions about Jesus and the fulfillment, evidence from time. These are the things that we have looked at. Uh, if any one of you missed on any of these five topics that we studied, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pastor Mohan Rao Ampadasari. Please find some time to go through each one of them so that you'll have a broader understanding of what we are studying. Today, we are going to look at the fifth part of our study, which is, um, if God created the universe, then who created God? So some, if this is a very important question, many people ask, and uh, we need to see if there is any rational, reasonable answer to this question. So the question is, who made God? If at all somehow we try to prove there is God, but the question still remains, who made God then? If God is there, if God made the universe, who made God? How, How do we understand this? Let me, let me introduce that, that question when we go to the table. Please, everyone, mute yourself so that it won't be a disturbance. Okay, so who made God? How do we answer it? Everyone knows that something does not come from nothing. So if God is a something, then he must have a cause, right? That's how common sense asks us questions. If we say, God exists, then who made him? Because humanly we know nothing comes out of nothing. Something must be there. Where did that something come from? What caused that something? Now, if God created the world, what created God? In other words, if everything in the universe has a cause, why does God get a free pass? Don't we need an explanation for his origin as well? That's what science, that's what human mind, everything has a cause. You can't think of anything existing without a cause, without a beginning. So if everything you see on earth and in the universe has a cause, how come God doesn't have a cause? How do you understand that? How do we explain? So does science give an explanation for existence? 
just general exam, whatever exists today, does science give us an explanation why things exist? No. Why anything exists in the first place? If you ask that question, science is powerless to answer that question because it can only speak in terms of cause and effect. That's all, that's, that's how far science can go. It cannot tell you why something exists. So far, there was no tangible, rational answer why things exist. So where did then, so where did God, God come from then? We know that from nothing, nothing comes. We know that. So if there were ever a time when there was absolutely nothing in existence, then nothing would have ever come into existence. That means if you say there was a time in the history, whenever it was, nothing existed, then it also makes us to come to conclude to say, if nothing existed, then there, <laughs> how does it mean? Then nothing would have ever come into existence. How can something coming to existence when there's nothing? So then what? But things do exist. But the reality is we know things exist. We see that. We are, a, we are evidence of that. Therefore, since there could never have been absolutely nothing, that means there was a time whenever it was, something existed. And because of that something, things have caused to come into being. So this statement says, therefore, since there was, there could never be absolutely nothing, something had to have always been in existence. That ever existing thing is what we call God. We call God, others, they still, I don't know if they, they come up with any answer. Some may say some power, some supernatural power, whatever, but as believers of, in God, we know that that supernatural power, that uh, that 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 which is cannot be ta that's not tangible is what we call God. God is the uncaused being that caused everything else to come into existence. In other words, we believe God is uncaused, and from that uncaused being, everything came into being. Uh, that's what we say. That means God was there in the beginning, but we still have to answer the question. God is the uncreated creator who created the universe and everything in it. That's good. But still the question, if he's uncreated, how is that possible? How can something be there when, not, when nothing has created it? So the question is, who created God? When you ask the question, who created God? The question itself is flawed. What is wrong with this question? Let's see. Who created God assumes that God can be created. If so, who created God? Who created God? And the chain continues to in uh, continues to infinity. So, if in other words, the question itself is not put or framed properly. When you say who created God, you are assuming that God can be created. And if that is to be the truth, then another question would come. Then who created that God who created? And the question continues for infinity because we have to find something that is not caused. That is the cause of everything. So you see the question itself is not phrased properly. By asking who created God, you are assuming God is, can be created. Also, you are thinking of a created God. Not only are you assuming that God can be created, we are also thinking God is somebody that can be created because the question itself, when you're asked who created, assumes that. The ancient world knows everything about the created gods, idols. Many religions that worship idols, they know how the creation, creation of those gods came to be. But the question is, if God can be created, then he cannot be God. If you can create a God, then he cannot be a God. God must be something beyond any imaginable thing that you can think of. That's what is supernatural all about. So if God is a person or a being that can be created, then what is the difference between him and us? It, we, we will be on the same level. If God can be created, then he is limited. 
we are humans limited. We live in time, we live in space, we have time frame, we have a space frame. So if God is also in the same level of a created being, then he also is limited. If God can be limited, then he cannot be God because he is limited like us. How, how do, what does make him better than us? So you see what, what's wrong with asking the question who created God? Also, to ask who created God is not only putting him in the created order, but also categorizing him in the created order. We are humans, as I said, we always can only think or imagine, comprehend, analyze, rationalize within a time and a space to which extent our minds can exceed or extend. So to bring God to that level, to my human imagination or irrationalism, it is to say, putting him in a created order, but not only that, we are actually categorizing him in the created order, bringing him to our level to understand him there. It is like someone said, it is like asking, what does blue smell like? In other words, the color blue, the color blue, what does it smell? What is wrong with that question? What does blue smell like? What is wrong with that question? The color blue is not in the category of things that have a smell. So if you take anything that has that is not in the category of smell and you ask what does it smell, the question is flawed. It is not the right question because you cannot uh, uh, associate smell to that color. So the question itself is flawed. Similarly, when you ask who created God, you are putting him in a category that is not there, that cannot be comprehended. God is not in the category of things that are created or caused. I want us to get that point. God is not in the category of things created or caused. God is uncaused and uncreated. That's what makes him God. If he can be caused, if he can be created, then there's no difference between him and us because we are also in the same category. So why God cannot be created? The next questions. If the question is wrong, who created God? The question is then why God cannot be created? God cannot be affected because God cannot be affected by time, matter, and space. These three are important. Every science student knows the importance of time and matter and space. God cannot be affected by any of these three things. If he's affected by them, then he cannot be God. They affect us. We are affected by time. We are affected by matter and space. But if God also can be affected by them, then he cannot be God. Why? If there is matter, if there is matter, but there is no space, where would you put it? I want you to get that point. If there is matter, but there is no space, where will you put that matter? And if there is space and matter, but there is no time, where would you and when would you put it? Imagine that uh, question. If there is space and there is matter, but there is no time. So when? When will you put this matter and space together? At what time? When is the question? You cannot have time, space, and matter independently. We understand that, isn't it? Show me, a, show me anything in the universe that is independent of these three, time, space, and matter. They cannot exist independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. There's nothing called space without matter and time. There's nothing called matter without space and time. There's nothing called time without space and matter. They all exist independently. Sorry, they all exist um, uh, simultaneously. Now, in the, the first verse of the Bible speaks of the same combination. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, that was time. God created the heavens, that's the space, and the earth, that is the matter. So you see, all things existed simultaneously. But God is not in the order of what? He is not affected by this time or space or matter. Why do we say that? The God who created time, space, and matter 
has to be outside of them in order to create them. Now, that's what makes God a beyond space, time, and matter. Take anything that man made. For example, computer I put there. Man cannot be in the computer and create a computer. He needs to be outside, occupy some space and the matter, and be at certain time in order to make that computer. That's what humanly. But so God, therefore, if God is restricted to time, space, and matter, he cannot create time, space, and matter, being in time, space, and matter. Just like how human reasoning tell us, I cannot create a computer, but being in the computer. I have to be outside of it if I have to bring or make anything. Anything that man made, he must be outside of it if he has to make it. So God also in the similar way, he cannot be affected by time, matter, and space if he were to create them as the scripture says, in the beginning God created. So the God who created the universe is outside of it and is not affected by it. Nothing of time, space, and matter can affect the existence of God or his, himself. Then how? So God is not a matter that occupies time and space. We know that matter needs what? Time and a space for it to be a matter. But God is not a matter. Bible says he is a spirit or what the other people might think, spiritual force. You cannot confine him to matter or to a time or to a space. The question, where did God come from, assumes not a limited God because our limited mind can only comprehend within time, space, and matter. And to think God in the same level is limiting him to our selves. So part of what it means to be God is that he is never created. That's what makes him God. If God is created, then who created the created God? If only, it only, it only exposes our ignorance of who God is. If he, because we had, do not know the answer. He is the only entity in existence whose reason for his existence is in himself. This is a powerful statement. He is the only entity in existence whose reason for his existence is in himself. Only he can give us the reason about his existence. To understand the reason for his existence, we need to get to the core being, which is impossible. In other words, if you want to understand the existence of something, the best way to understand that thing is to get into its being. If you understand the existence of computer, watch, glasses, whatever you think of, you should get into the very existence of that thing to understand. Then you know exactly why it came, how it came, and how it works, how it doesn't work. But therefore, if you want to understand God about his existence, the only way you can do that is to get into his core being, which humanly impossible. There's nothing that man can explain which he has not seen. Similarly, God is that person which is not physically seen which can be explained. Everyone has the reason for their existence outside of themselves. Why we exist is given evidence of what happens around us. Nothing you see in nature can give self-explanation for its existence. Mango tree doesn't tell you why it exists. All of the physical have to be explained somewhere which is not physical. So God is what God is uncaused. It, it, it is impossible for God not to be caused because if that's the case, then we have no beginning of anything. For God to be God, he has to be uncaused, infinite, and independent. That's what makes God beyond human rationalism, beyond human cause and effect, and understanding. That's what makes him God. Otherwise, if he has got reasons like us, if we can put him in the box of a rationalism like us, then he's like us, he's at our level. Now let's look at, okay, that's okay, but can you rationalize this? How do we do it? Philosophy, even science, believes in the notion of the uncaused first cause. If you were to ask any scientist, any philosopher, they have give you the beginning of things, but where did that beginning begin from? All come to conclusion, there is something called uncaused first effect from which 
everything came into existence. Now we believing believers, we call that uncaused first effect a person. That's why we call him a divine God. But some other people or people who don't believe in a real literal God, they may say it's impersonal. Some force of chemistry or physics, it's not necessarily a person or a being. It could be some force. The common thing everybody believes is there must have been an, something which is uncaused that is the cause of everything. Some people believe that uncaused thing is God like us. Some believe it is impersonal. You cannot attribute a personality to it. It can be a force of chemistry or physics. And the, the most common theory on this understanding is most people believe it's Big Bang. But if you go into the theory of Big Bang, this does not explain the first cause. How do we know? Let's quickly look at what the Big Bang says. The broadly accepted theory for the origin and evolution of our universe is the Big Bang model, which states that the universe began as an incredibly hot, dense point. Look at what it says. There was a time when it began. When was it? 13.7 billion years ago. I can't even, man has no historical evidence of anything beyond 6,000 years in written form or evidence. But man have come up with this number, 13 point billion, they say by observation of some fossils or whatever. We will study about creation and evolution maybe next after we close this topic and we will look at how that works. But for now, man believes about talking about the Big Bang Theory. How did the world begin? The origin, which states that the universe began as an incredibly hot, dense point, roughly 13.7 billion years ago. So how did the universe go from being a fraction of an inch? That means when this universe began, that, it, that, it, that itself says there was a beginning, there was a cause, there was a beginning. When did it begin? 13.7 billion. How did it begin? Going from a fraction of some small, small, tiny thing. It began as a small, tiny thing. Hot, incredibly hot, dense point, I believe. But the question is, where did that hot, dense point come from? Science is yet to discover. But they say there was a beginning. So across to what is, so that little beginning has spread to what we see around today. For example, the Big Bang was not an explosion in space as the theory name might suggest. Instead, it was the appearance of a space everywhere in the universe. Researchers have said, according to the Big Bang theory, the universe was born as a very hot, very dense single point in space. That's what the Big Bang says. How it had a beginning, the beginning was very small, very tiny, hot, dense single point. When the universe was so, when the universe was very young in that single point, something like a hundredth of a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. Can you imagine how small that is? I can't even imagine. It underwent an incredibly, incredibly growth spurt. Look at how man is trying to put everything in human reasoning to make sense of what we see around. Something very small very tiny, it went through what? Suddenly a growth spurt, it began to expand. During this burst of expansion, which is known as inflation, the universe grew exponentially and doubled in size at least 90 times. Just like how teenagers, when they hit teens, the growth spurt, they suddenly shoot up. The earth also at one point of time have went, underwent this growth spurt and it expanded 90 times bigger than what it was. The universe was expanding as and, at, and as it expanded, it got cooler. How did it start? Very dense, hot, small point. As it expanded, it became cooler and less dense. That's what David Spurgeon, a theoretical astrophysicist at the Princeton University says. After inflation, the universe continued to grow, but at a lower, slower rate. As space expanded, the universe cooled and matter was formed. Can you imagine? Something very tiny expanded, hot, became cool, space was formed. And when space was formed, the universe became cooler 
and when it was cooled, matter was formed. How? Where did the matter come from? Where did this hot, dense point come from? That has no explanation, but it did start somewhere. So the category of the uncreated is not an empty uh, top. Look at the first law of thermodynamics. What does it say? It says energy can be changed from one form to another, but it cannot be created or destroyed. The first law of thermodynamics conservation states that energy is always conserved. It, can be, it cannot be created or destroyed. In essence, energy can be converted from one form to another, but you cannot destroy it, neither can you create it. It existed. Where did it come from? Well, maybe the science and the Big Bang will say from the tiny hot point. If they say that matter and energy are finite, then they have to answer who created and what caused them because they believe they are finite. Because Why is it finite? Because there was a beginning. Anything that has a beginning is what we call finite. So who created that one? They, we don't have an answer. So the buck must stop somewhere. God existed eternally, and so the creation bug stops at God. They believe something existed forever, but they don't believe it is eternal God. So if you ask them, where did the small, dense, hot point come from? Because there was nothing in the universe. How can something come out of nothing? They say there must have been something that caused this, which is uncaused. Now, we call that uncaused cause God, but the science doesn't want to accept that is God. We still need to know more. This is what their conclusion is. Look at this statement. While much has been discovered about the creation and evolution of the universe, there was enduring questions that remain unanswered. This is what science is saying. So much has been discovered, but we don't have answers for everything. What is that they still don't have an answer for? Look at the statement. Dark matter and dark energy remain two of the biggest mysteries. But cosmologists continue to probe the universe in hope of better understanding how it all began. As the law of thermodynamics says, you cannot create or destroy the energy and the matter. So they're saying the dark matter and dark energy that exists is the biggest mysteries. And still the science is trying to find out how it could have began. They know there was a beginning, but how it began from nothing is something that they're still trying to find a reason. So, but we know it is from God. The power of God, look at what the Bible says, Job. Job was written when there was no science, when there was no knowledge of any telescopes, any scientific invention, nothing. But look at what he says. In fact, we believe it is written in 1500 BC before Christ, when there was no invention of any sort of what we have today. And without any avail an availab availability of books or science or anything, look at what Job said. He stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. He said, what earth is hanging on nothing? Can you imagine when there was no knowledge of any science? Job says, the earth is hanging on nothing. That's what the science says today. He binds up the water in his thick clouds. When you look at the clouds from now, as an ordinary person without any scientific knowledge, you look at the clouds, they look like some fog or some smoke or some kind of a thing. If you don't know that it contains water through science, you would never know. But look what the, the Samya, the Job said. He binds up the water in his thick clouds. Yet the clouds are not broken under it. Can you imagine? When you go through the aeroplane, you can go through these clouds and you wonder. Look at what the Job says. These clouds are not broken under because they contain water. How is it possible they're not broken? He covers the face of his throne and spreads his cover. He drew a circular horizon on the face of the waters at the boundary of light and darkness. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his rebuke. He stirs up the sea with his power and by his understanding, he breaks up the storms. By his spirit, he adorned the heavens. His hand pierced the fleeing serpent. Indeed, these are the mere edges of his ways 
and how small a whisper we hear of him, but the thunder of his power, who can understand? God is thundering through the creation, but how little we hear him physically, because there's ample evidence of his mighty power in the creation. Psalm, Psalms 91 to 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you have formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Look at Psalmist, how he describes God. I don't know how they had this revelation purely by the will of God. What does he say about God, the eternity of God? From everlasting to everlasting. When you say everlasting, you cannot put a beginning to it because it is everlasting, something that has no beginning. That's what he ascribes God to be. You are from everlasting to you are everlasting. The uncaused cause is God. Look at First Colossians 1.15. Christ says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. How the world, whole world is holding together is purely because of God holding things together. Uh, so that is what we have a bit of understanding the God. If you say, if God created the universe, then who created God? You can clearly say God is an uncaused being because if you go on asking that question, no science, nobody can give an explanation to that uncaused. Every believe, everyone believes there is something called uncaused that was the cause. For example, Big Bang, the hot spot, something was there before. They, they're still to probe and find out that. And I think if I believe Bible is true and God is real, there will never be a time in history where science will come up and say a tangible, reasonable, this was that uncaused being. Right now they believe it could be something supernatural, which is uncaused, we know, which makes more sense to believe there is a being who has a purpose in creating everything than to believe there is something that has no purpose, that has no life, that is the cause of life. How can we actually rational beings say that thing that has no life is the cause for life to come? It is something, as that's why more atheists need more belief, more faith to believe what they say is right than us. Next week, we come together and look at uh, also another important thing. Is God alone? Because so many people believe in all gods, but how can we say our God is true? Let me stop recording.